Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'll be showing you the top 10 new features in the brand new GIMP version 2.10. So there's quite a few new features that come with GIMP version 2.10. This is the first stable release of GIMP in six or seven years. So I've actually been anticipating this for quite some time now. And I've already had a chance to use a lot of these features because of our tutorials we did with GIMP 2.9.8, uh, GIMP 2.10 RC1 and GIMP 2.10 RC2. And I'll be referencing some of those tutorials in this tutorial. But with my experience doing those tutorials, I've compiled what I think are the 10 best new features you'll find in GIMP version 2.10. But before we get into that, of course, I want to direct you guys over to my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You'll find tons of video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And thank you to the over 200 students that have enrolled so far. And you can support our channel and help us grow on Patreon at patreon.com slash daviesmediadesign. And I'll include a link to this as well as a link to our Udemy course and any other relevant links in the description of this video. Now the first feature is actually a really basic feature but it's really useful especially for brand new users and that is the full integration search feature. And what that does is it allows you to search for tools and filters and really anything in GIMP using a simple command. So all you gotta do is hit the forward slash on your keyboard and you'll see this little box that pops up. You can uh, increase the size of it if you want but you'll see here it says search actions and for instance if I type in let's say I want to use the new unified transform tool and we'll get into that in a second it'll bring up the unified transform tool in here and when I click on it it'll bring me to that tool and it'll apply that tool to my active layer so that's a super useful feature and I'll do this again this time I'll use for instance a filter and so I typed in vignette and now our vignette filter pops up here and this is a gaggle filter we'll also get into this in a second and if I click on that, you'll see that now it applies this Gaggle filter to my active layer. So that is a super useful feature and it's really easy to get to. The second feature is one that I've already gone over in more detail in another tutorial, and that's opening raw images in GIMP. So uh, GIMP 2.10 now supports opening raw images directly into GIMP, sort of. Uh, so this is actually a third party app. You do have to download Darktable. And again, I go over this in more detail in my other tutorial. But once you do download Darktable, all you have to do is find whatever raw file you're trying to open in GIMP, right click on it, go to Open With, and choose uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is what GIMP stands for. And you'll see now that a Darktable window pops up automatically. And again, I chose opening this with GIMP, and it opened it in Darktable. And then you go ahead and make your edits in here in Darktable, close this out, and you'll see once I close it out, now it's loading down here in the loading bar. And now our raw image is open directly into GIMP. So really cool feature, uh, something that simplifies your workflow and adds some more functionality to GIMP. Now the third feature I wanna highlight is that GIMP now includes 80 Gaggle filters. And I do go into what Gaggle is and why it's important to the future of GIMP in another tutorial. So I'll link that in the description. But essentially all you gotta know is that Gaggle filters help speed up GIMP and it helps improve the functionality of some of the filters. So for instance, now a lot of the popular filters in here. So if you go to filters and for instance, blur, now they have a G next to them, and that means they're a Gaggle filter. So there's been 80 new Gaggle filters added in here, um, or there's 80 Gaggle filters total now. And so Gaussian blur is one, and basically this just allows you to uh, create a blur on your image, only now that it's using the Gaggle filter, you can preview that directly on the image here. You'll see uh, that it's applying this directly to this. You don't have to wait until you apply this filter for it to show up on here. You get a live preview now. You can also do a split view here. So if I click on split view, you'll see that this line gets split down the middle or it splits our original image down the middle and now on the left you see a before and on the right you see an after and you can also move this line around if you want um, so when you click OK this will go ahead and apply that filter and this is a pretty large image and that actually uh, happened pretty quickly so this is almost 8,000 by 5,000 pixels so it's a pretty big image and it's still able to apply these filters pretty quickly so that's one of the benefits of a Gaggle filter and I'll hit Control Z now I just showed you a second ago the vignette filter, so if you go to filters, light and shadow, vignette, now they have a Gaggle version of the vignette filter and I have an entire tutorial on uh, how to create vignettes and the best way to use vignettes and how to adjust these settings. But now just know that you have a vignette filter and it's a Gaggle filter, which means it's going to work a little quicker. It's going to allow you to live preview the filter directly on the composition and it allows you to have that split preview feature here. 
Now the next feature is one that I've seen a lot of people going over in other tutorials, and that's the ability to customize the user interface. So right now I have GIMP set in the kind of traditional interface, and that's because I do like uh, the way GIMP looks, the classic look. Uh, but you can come over here to Edit, Preferences, and now you'll see here under Interface, you've got a few options here. So you can customize the theme, and this allows you, if you want, you can go with a dark theme, or a gray theme, or a light theme. And then you've got the system theme here, which is, uh, I believe, what comes stock with this. So you can set this to whatever you want. Then you have the icon theme, so you can change this to Legacy, which is what I have this set to. Um, or you can go with a color icon scheme. So this is just a different look to the icons, uh, symbolic, and then symbolic inverted. I don't like these two. I think they're too simplified and it makes it kind of hard to distinguish what uh, each icon is. So I just like to stick with legacy, but just know you can come in here and customize your icon theme. You can also change the size of your icons here. So you've got small, medium, large, and huge. And you've got the ability here to either let this automatically adjust based on the resolution of your screen size, or you can use the icon size from the theme. So one of these themes, or you can create a custom icon size and that's what allows you to change this uh, from small to medium, large, or huge. And I can see huge having its purposes for people who uh, maybe can't see as well or just prefer to be able to access their icons a little bit more easily. But I'm gonna keep mine set to uh, guess icon size from resolution. And I'll hit cancel to keep these settings the same. The next feature that comes built in with GIMP 2.10 is better color management. And so I'll come over here to my image again and you'll see at the very top, you've got the uh, color space of the image, which is usually gonna be RGB because this is an RGB uh, piece of software. And then you've got the amount of bits per color channel right here and the type of channel. So we've got uh, up here, it says 32 bit linear floating point and it's using GIMP's built-in linear sRGB color profile here. So GIMP didn't used to be able to handle 32-bit images. And if I come over here, you'll see that uh, this image, for example, this is one I took uh, myself with my camera. This says up here, it's an RGB color again, but it's got 8-bit gamma integer right here as the color setting. Now, if I wanted to change this to 32-bit floating point, all I have to do is go to Image, Precision, and you've got all your options here. So you've got 16-bit, 32-bit integer, and then 16-bit floating point and 32-bit floating point. And then you can also change it from perceptual gamma or sRGB, which is GIMP's default color space, to uh, linear light. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this image to 32-bit floating point. And that's just going to allow there to be some more information in my image, and it's gonna produce a better final result. And I'll change the gamma to linear light and I'll hit convert. And so now my image up top, you can see here, is a 32-bit linear floating point image. So that's a brand new feature. GIMP, I believe, used to only go up to 8-bit or 16-bit. So now it goes all the way up to 32-bit, and it can do uh, integer or floating point. So this is just another upgrade to GIMP's color management, as well as its ability to handle and edit higher quality images. So the next new feature found in GIMP 2.10 are the new transform tools. And if I come over here to my toolbox, you'll see one right here. This is the unified transform tool. And this is a really cool feature, and I'll show you an application of this. So let's say I edit, copy this image, and then I come over here. I've got an image of a laptop here, and I go to Control V to paste this. So I pasted this image into my new composition, and this is a very large image, by the way. And I can come over here, and you'll see there's actually a new feature here, which is GIMP is now highlighting the tools that you can use when you add a new image into a layer. Uh, or a floating selection into a layer. And so here I can create a new layer. And now that I've created this new layer, I want to transform this a couple ways. I wanna scale it down and I wanna change the perspective and maybe rotate this. So instead of having to use multiple tools, now I can grab my Unified Transform tool, click on this layer, and I might have to zoom out for this actually. So let me grab my zoom tool. I'm gonna to undo that and grab my zoom tool and zoom out and then redo, adding this to a floating selection. So I'll grab my Unified Transform tool, click on this layer, and if I hover over here, you'll see that my pointer is going to change. It's going to cycle between different tools depending on which part of this I'm hovered over. So if I hover over this first square here, this is the scale tool. Uh, this inside diamond here is the perspective tool. Down here, we've got the shear tool, and then you've also got the move tool if I just hover in the middle here. So I can click into the top left corner of this and just scale this down. 
And if I hold shift, it'll scale it down proportionately or uh, using the same aspect ratio. And then I can move this over and I'll just scale this down some more. And by the way, I can also adjust the image opacity of the preview here while I'm transforming and that just will allow me to see the laptop screen beneath it. And so I'm just holding shift and dragging this down some more. So now we have this about to the approximate size we need it, but the perspective's wrong. So all I need to do now is hover over the uh, diamond here in the corner. And now I can adjust this perspective a little bit until it matches the perspective of this laptop. And this is just a quick approximation. I'm not going to be too detailed about this just for the sake of time. But once I have this in the position I want, I can hit transform. And now using one tool, we've transformed this a couple of ways to get this to fit into the laptop screen. And now it looks as if uh, this image that we took is displayed on this laptop screen. Now there's probably a couple of other things I would wanna do to this image to make it look more realistic, but I just wanna demonstrate how the unified transform tool can be used in a real life application. Uh, this is something that is done all the time in the design world, you know, adding photos to screens. So you've also got something called the handle transform and that just allows you to click on whatever uh, active layer you're on and go ahead and transform this around the handle. So for instance, I can scale this, I can rotate it, I can scale it up and down and it's going to do that while pivoting on this handle. So that's what that's for. And you can create multiple handles here. So if I create a second handle, it'll now transform around that handle. Each time I click actually, this is uh, creating a new handle and it's allowing me to make adjustments to this based on those handles. So I'll hit reset here and I'm actually just going to exit out of this. The next feature is one I've gone over in several other tutorials. I've been sort of ranting and raving about this tool for a very long time and that is the gradient tool. It used to be called the blend tool but they just decided that everybody calls it the gradient tool anyway so they were just going to name it the gradient tool within GIMP now. So the gradient tool is over here in your toolbox and you guys have probably used this tool quite a bit and again right here it says gradient now instead of saying blend. And I've got several tutorials using the gradient tool, including an entire tutorial dedicated specifically to the gradient tool and the on canvas editing features that it now comes with. But for those of you who aren't aware of this tool yet, I'll just come over to this image real quick. And let's say we were doing this for like a website or something, and this was gonna be a website banner and we wanted text on the left side here. Well, I can grab my foreground tool, we'll change this color to black, and right now I have this set to foreground and background, but let's say I set it to foreground to transparent and the shape is set to linear here. The old gradient tool would only allow you to click and drag this. And once you have this in a certain position, and I'm holding the control key to uh, put this in straight line mode, but once you had this set in the position you wanted this in and you released your mouse, uh, the gradient would just apply and you can no longer edit it. Well now with this gradient tool, you have an on canvas editing feature which allows you to adjust, for instance, uh, where the fade happens on this, or where the gradient itself starts. So I can adjust the starting endpoint and the end endpoint here. And those are the official names for these. And I can also actually change the color of this. So let's say I wanted this to be white instead of black. I can flip this and now with our foreground color being white, our gradient is white. And you can continue doing this. I could do red if I wanted. I can even change the shape here if I wanted. So if this is bilinear or maybe it's square. So you can change the shape of this in real time and really adjust any of the gradient settings here in real time. And then once you're ready to apply your changes, just uh, switch over to another tool and that will apply your gradient to whatever active layer you're on. So in this case, I just happen to do this directly on the image layer, which I don't recommend. I always recommend uh, putting this on a new layer, but I just wanted to demonstrate the gradient tool. So again, I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to that on canvas gradient editing feature. So if you're interested in learning more, I definitely recommend you check that out and I'll link it to this video. So the next top new feature found in GIMP 2.10 is the ability to add layer masks to layer groups. And this is something I went over in my GIMP 2.10 first look tutorial in more detail. And of course I'll link that to this video. So let's say I've got a new layer here and I'm just gonna name this gradient. And by the way, GIMP 2.10 now comes with a lot of new features for creating a new layer. So for instance, I can add a color tag to this layer and that's just going to add a color over here to help define uh, this layer. So let's say you want to organize your workspace or your layers uh, so that different layers that are associated with each other have different color tags. You can add a color tag to your layer. You can also change the blend mode of the layer directly in here 
And then you've got some other options here, including opacity, the width and height of the layer, and then the uh, fill width option. So I can fill this with transparency, uh, white, or the foreground or background color, etc. And I've also got some switches here so I can uh, transform link this to another layer that has the transform link option checked. Or I can lock the pixels of this layer, which means that you're not going to be able to draw on this layer. And then you can lock alpha, which means you can't edit the transparency of this, or lock the position and size, which means you can't perform a transformation on this layer. But I'll keep this pretty basic for now and click OK. So you can see here that our color tag shows up, so now this layer is differentiated with this blue color tag. And now I'm just going to draw a gradient on this layer, so I'll grab my gradient tool. And let's say I want to, you know, add some warmth to this, so I add a yellow color, and then I add an orange color here. And then I go ahead and draw this gradient. And I'm going to change my gradient to foreground and background, and uh, foreground and background RGB. And I'm going to change the shape of this to linear. And I'll go ahead and grab my move tool to apply this gradient. So let's say I also want to bring in another image. And so I'll come over here and go to edit copy and then come over here to my composition and hit control V to paste. And I'll put this floating selection layer on a new layer. And now for whatever reason, I want to group these two. So I'll create a new layer group and just name this image with gradient. And I'll put these two files into this image group here. And let's say I want to add two different layer masks to these. So I right click on here and go to add layer mask and we'll put this at uh, black full transparency. And I want to add a layer mask to this as well. So I'll right click on here and go to add layer mask. And let's say I just want this to be uh, white full opacity. So let's say now I want to paint on my gradient layer mask here. So I'll come over to my paintbrush and I'll select white as my color. And I've got a hardness of 025 set here for my brush. And let's say now I want to paint on this image. So I'm just painting on the layer mask here to reveal the gradient. And then I'll click on my original uh, gradient layer here. And let's say I want to change the layer mode to something else. So we'll do overlay for now. And then I'll come over to my layer mask here for my other layer. And I'll click on the foreground color and change this to black. And let's say maybe I don't want the children in the photo for whatever reason, so I'll paint over that. And then maybe I don't want these people in here. All right, so now we've got two different layer masks on our two different layers here. But let's say we want to create a layer mask that applies to both of these layers. Well, to save time now in GIMP 2.10, you can now add a layer mask to layer groups. And this is something that you couldn't do before. So you can right click on here and go to add layer mask. Let's say under initialize layer mask two, uh, we'll select black full transparency and click add. And so now both of these disappear, but then I can grab my gradient and let's say I just want things to appear in the top left and not in the bottom right. So I'll come over here and change my foreground color to white and just draw the gradient in the top left corner. And you'll see in the top left that both of these layers are now revealed in the corner here and they still have those layer masks applied to them from before. And we can move this around if we wanted to and reveal more of this uh, or whatever. So uh, this can really come in handy. And again, I do recommend you check out that GIMP 2.10 first look tutorial I did because I used a ton of layer masks for that and created a really cool photo manipulation. So definitely check that out if you wanna see some more real world examples as to how that layer mask can be used. So the next top new feature found in GIMP 2.10 are the 10 new layer modes that come directly built into GIMP. So I'll come over here to our composition and to our layers panel. And you'll see here when I click on mode, um, you guys might not be able to tell right now, but there's a ton of new features in here. And you can really tell when you come over here and change this, you've got the option to uh, set this to legacy right here. So if I set this to legacy and I choose the drop down, these were the layer modes that came originally in GIMP 2.8.22. But if I come over here and choose default, you'll see that now we have a lot of new layers in here, a lot of new layer modes, I should say. Um, especially like the Vivid Light, Pin Light, and quite a few other layer modes found in GIMP 2.10. So I definitely recommend playing around with those and seeing what kind of new effects you can come up with on your compositions and on your images. Now the last top new feature found in GIMP 2.10 is the new My Paintbrush tool. And it's found over here in your toolbox. 
This is basically an extension of the regular paintbrush tool. So if I click on the regular paintbrush tool and click on the brushes that you'll find in here, you'll see that there's 20 or so brushes in here and uh, some grunge brushes and really not too many going on here. And that was one of the things that I guess people who do uh, drawings and illustrations in general didn't like about GIMP. Uh, but now GIMP has something called the My Paintbrush tool. And this actually has a lot more brushes in here, a lot more artistic brushes. And so you've got things like a pencil here. So this is a 2B pencil. It's a pretty specific type of pencil. You've got a 4H pencil here. And then you've got like a ball pen, a ballpoint pen, and an acrylic brush here. So you've got all sorts of different brushes in here. And then you've got the ability to blur some of these. So let me open up a new document. I'll go to File New. And I'm just gonna make this a smaller document. And let me fill this background in with a white. And I'll grab my, my paintbrush tool and I'll just change this to black. And I do actually have a tablet on me and so I'm gonna do a quick demonstration with the tablet. I'm not gonna to get too much into it because I'm not really a sketch artist and I don't have the pressure sensitivity set up. But I'll go ahead and select a brush here. So let's go with the 4H pencil and I can increase my brush size a little bit if I want or decrease it. And I'll just do some like cross hatching here. So you'll see that this looks very much like a pencil. And then we've got again, other types of brushes. So here's acrylic. And I don't have the pressure sensitivity set up on this. So I'm not entirely doing this justice. But then we've got a knife brush here and that gives a cool texture. And then you've got the ability to blend some of these. So uh, there's different blend styles, so there's the blur, there's the denoise, so if I click on this and then I come over here and start blending on these, you'll see that this kind of blends in a specific way, it creates these dots. Or if I choose the blur blend mode, that'll just kind of blur these together, it almost looks like a smudge, like as if you're smudging the canvas with your finger. So yeah, basically the My Paintbrush tool basically upgrades GIMP's brushes, or at least the artistic brushes, and it allows you to create a variety of different types of brushes like acrylic or pencil. And so this is really great for people who do illustrations or just any kind of sketch work within GIMP. So those are my top 10 new features found in GIMP 2.10. If there's a new feature that you love in the new GIMP 2.10 that I left out in this video, please let us know in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign for more GIMP tutorials, including GIMP 2.10 tutorials. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. And you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as a link to our Patreon page and all of the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.